Hey everybody, welcome back to the Triple C Collective here on this Superhero Saturday. I'm going to dive into Peacemaker, Episode 7, Stop Dragging My Heart Around. Um, this episode <clears throat> this episode was really good. I liked it a lot. Um, there's some good stuff at the end here that I really like. Um, this show has totally grown on me from episode to episode. First episode's still really a tough hang. Um, if I ever rewatch the series, probably we'll just start from episode two. Um, but as the show's gone on, it's gotten like better and better. I've enjoyed the characters um, more and more. Um, I'm still on the fence about Peacemaker a little bit, um, but but I have enjoyed them trying to redeem him. It's been it's been interesting. It's been an interesting ride with that. Um, but this episode does a little bit more. It actually does something that uh, finally puts all of the pieces together that we have uh, seen throughout the first six episodes in like random flashbacks with uh, Peacemaker Chris Smith and his brother Keith. Um, we actually get him and Keith together on the day that Keith dies. We see that like full on like them doing like the air instruments and stuff in the room is 100 percent um what they are doing before then they go to the little like i don't know pit bull or whatever that his that their dad and like his um his little members or whatever dug out to have fights and I think they say something about having dog fights usually but then they just ended up having these two they say that they that there are that usually they try and lay down rules but then this time they're like there are no rules and then of course inevitably um <coughs> Chris Smith kills his brother Keith you know just hits him the right way Keith falls backwards you know hits his head starts like oh my god out and we just see him you know die um it's really it's really awful really really tough watch um it's not something that like you really want to watch all the time or whatever um but it finally we finally get to see like what you know what made him um what kind of set him on his path to like be who he is um, because even in the aftermath of his brother, like, his dad is still, like, yelling at him, like, this is your fault, like, the, you killed him and stuff. But it's like, if you didn't make us have to fight, you know, <laughs> none of this would have happened. This is on you, old man, like, you shouldn't have put us there. Um, this is, this scene then, after we see it, like, finally, like, in completion, is broken by Vigilante knocking on the door. Peacemaker is still kind of coming back into his, um, into his own, like, from, like, clearly thinking about the, that day, that memory. Um, and we get Vigilante, like, knocking on the door. Peacemaker is still kind of, um, like, crying a little bit. And then we get... I'm sorry, Vigilante's knocking on the door, Peacemaker's still crying. We get the title sequence, which has, like, episode one, I've always liked the song, I thought it was a good song for, like, a title sequence, um, but it's always been super off-putting, the, like, lack of facial expressions. However, I will say one of my favorite, one of my favorite things, despite the lack of facial expressions, is, uh, is Leona Adebayo's wife, uh, Kia, in it. Um, her giving the finger um, during it is, like, one of my favorite things in the world. It's so good. Um, so I will say that about it, because otherwise I find that... I find their lack of facial expressions so, like, off-putting and weird, and, like, I'm always so uncomfortable, but I'm like, I can't stop watching because I really like the song. Um... And I guess I, I keep watching to see if they're going to change it or if there's something that, like, I'm missing there or whatever. But no, I just I just think that that might just be, like, one of the one of the jokes that's, like, over my head or whatever. But 
<laughs> Kia, she get, she, her dancing, giving the finger like that is extremely funny to me. I just find that absolutely hilarious every time I see it. Um, so then after the title sequence, we get back to the uh, Peacemaker. Uh, the Peacemaker HQ. He comes out of the bat. Peacemaker comes out of the bathroom. Uh, <clears throat> Vigilante is like uh, asking uh, Peacemaker about uh, uh, like I thought you didn't have a diary and like Peacemaker's like we gotta go, dude. Like the guy that's supposed to be like our friend and liaison at the police station is out there talking about a diary. That means he's compromised as a butterfly. Like we have uh, got to, we've got to go. Adebayo clearly planted the diary there and like is a part of this and betrayed me. Uh, as he's walking around, he sees that he's like, <laughs> they see that judo master's gone again nobody knows where he went peacemaker's just like well can't deal with that right now deal with that later um there's nothing we can do about that we get a cut to um the white dragon and like his people trying to uh figure out where peacemaker is and he uh the white dragon alludes to having a gps tracker in uh in what am I th in the helmets of excuse me the helmets of like that he makes for Peacemaker so that he can always like track him or whatever I guess maybe to take him back or to like do what he wants to do now and track down his son and kill him and uh it's it's absolutely insane it's it's wild um I really I really hate the white dragon I really do we're back at uh, the uh, Peacemaker, you know, HQ. Again, Vigilante's like, dude, I thought you kept... could have sworn you said that you didn't keep a diary. And it's like, I don't have a diary. Um, I don't... <laughs> um, then there's the collage, uh, like, uh, conversation. John Economos is there now. Um and their peacemakers still packing up like getting ready you know to like just leave we don't know where he wants to go yet <laughs> um and but the collage conversation is really funny because like uh vigilante is like i don't know maybe you want to go and do a collage and like <laughs> peacemakers like why would i want a collage and john's like if there's actually something i would see you doing it would be doing a collage you know what all right i would collage and stuff and all of it is uh <laughs> really awesome uh and john finally asks like wait where are you guys going peacemakers like to kill this cow are you coming and it's pretty awesome it's pretty sweet then we get out of bio and uh, Harcourt. They are uh, together. Uh, Harcourt is like, you know, pressing out of bio. So you were the one who planted the diary. You know, um, you were going to lone shooter the poor bastard. Like he, like he thought you were his friend. And uh, and out of bio is like, so you've just been messing with me this entire time. Like, you know, you, you've just been. Um, messing with me since I got here. Uh, you're an asshole. Uh, why do you think I would say something about medical issues? Because I think you're the type of person, I think you're the type of bitch who would say that. Like, it's great back and forth between Adebayo and Harcourt. They're just really kind of, like, letting it all fly. And it's, it's pretty great. It's, it's, it's pretty awesome. Um, because we're all hurt by Adebayo's, like, overall betrayal that we all knew though like despite me like really liking her like it still hurts it still hurts um she's still one of my favorite people um one of my favorite characters like definitely on this show though um i'm really excited to uh watch the you know season finale and uh find out like you know what happens there and everything it's gonna be great super excited um Oh, 
that didn't sound good. Sounded like something fell. Uh, sorry about that. Um, in the fight of between Harcourt and Adebayo, uh, they also talk about the different fights of like, so what? The only li what like they're talking about what lives matter and stuff. Um, it's like that. It, like out of bio saying like we're not trying like it's only the people that like matter that are like fighting beside you like what about that innocent guy that like had nothing to do with any of this like that was begging for his life that you killed like did did that not matter that he deserved to die and our court's like no the people that fighting beside you matter in this instance what we're talking about here for what we do it's the people fighting beside you um it's a it's a really interesting conversation because out of bio keeps saying that like i'm not made for this I, I i shouldn't have been here now and stuff like she only took this job because like her shelter and stuff like got like shut down and everything like it's crazy to hear um everything that they're talking about and how they're uh how they're both rationalizing their actions toward like their actions throughout the entire series despite neither one of them being necessarily right nor necessarily wrong um because they both are truly doing what they think is best and even now like out of bio like clearly feels like sorry about the betrayal like she was clearly torn about putting the uh diary there and like doing that and um having that whole scenario play out for them um we get um Mern showing up he knows like Harcourt's like so did you know that out of bio um he was like well i assume now that it was out of bio that planted the diary which she could have waited until after this um mission was over but you know that it is what it is uh, um we also get then uh he was like yeah I, and like of course i i always do background checks on like everyone who's coming with or like everyone who's coming to work with me so like of course i knew that she was amanda waller's daughter like how do you think like she got how do you think i let her on here without a real resume like that's her resume it was pretty interesting to like see to like officially get all of like the dynamics of like this that like Mern really has um has really had full control at least all of the knowledge or at least most of it like a good good portion of it to be able to um like run his operation and stuff and like it's all uh it's all pretty crazy um We get the easy peasy mart with Judo Master. He shows up eating some chips. We get two dweebs that are like just making fun of him, and they're just assholes. And they deserve everything that happens to them and that is coming towards them. And Judo Master is just eating his chips, asking about um, Vigilante, and that just beats the crap out of them because they can't answer it and they're just rude to him and it's really great because the guy working the counter is like yeah awesome like to judo master after he beats the guys up judo master just kind of like raises a chip to him and, and then he actually judo master steals the car and um steals those guys car it's pretty great <laughs> it's pretty awesome actually um we get hardcore just calling uh peacemaker trying to uh make like the uh make the plan trying to figure out where he is 
Um, we get the um, van travel uh, of John Vigilante, Peacemaker, in the van, getting attacked, hunted and attacked by the White Dragon and all of his um, Aryan Brotherhood like members and stuff. Um, they all have their like almost zodiac more like zodiac kind of killer looking um like straw bags like burlap sap bags almost over their faces like that um it's all pretty wild the white dragon hits the van knocks it over because like he's flying kind of like iron man and stuff in it um doesn't have like it, whatever that's he's flying like iron man he's got jetpacks things coming out of his feet and stuff that like yeah close enough it's um yeah it's close enough and um <clears throat> white dragon hits the van knocks it over uh john doesn't die uh vigilante you know he has his suit so he survives peacemaker survives it uh, White Dragon rips open, actually it's pretty sweet, rips open one of the like side walls to like get inside the van to come after uh, his son. Then we get um, we get uh, Vigilante shooting the back of uh, the White Dragon or like kind of knifing really the back of the White Dragon um, kind of and uh, to like distract the white dragon as john and peacemaker run away vigilante um drops a uh a bomb after he like allows like john and uh peacemaker to run into the uh forest one way he uh vigilante gets out drops like a grenade in front of um himself and like the white dragon blows them all up and stuff um that's enough of a distraction for again john and peacemaker but it's also enough of a distraction for vigilante to dip out on the other side of the uh of the other side of the road that he's standing in the middle of opposite of john and peacemaker side and is able to hide behind a tree there after the explosion and kind of recover for a minute um as the rest of the white dragon and like his people go inside the forest chasing after peacemaker and um john uh we get an awesome forest chase uh john asking the big questions here like man how did he find you like how did he how, how did he follow us like here this is like crazy how did he find you here and peacemaker like screams throws his helmet and he's like he's got to be tracking me through like my helmet and stuff um we that we get that like confirmed again like on the tablet and everything um we get vigilante coming out from the trees stealing uh the little like four-door sedan car that's there i'm not knocking the car it's the only thing that's there and it's the only thing that has keys in it because why would you leave your keys in in your car at a time like this but whatever vigilante you know is able to steal it and takes off he picks up the duffel bag like a bag as well and like tosses it into the uh into the into the car and you know drives off we get a cut back to uh judo master um again beating down the guys carjacking them taking off we get Mern, harcourt and out of bio um like they all see the police at the um at the apartment building because they're all trying to get ready to go because you know peacemaker has uh has that uh, has all the cops out looking for him. Uh, they are now associated with him. Some of the people that they have taken over now know that Mern and Harcourt and Adebayo are with Peacemaker or, again, known associates of Peacemaker. So they want to figure out who, uh, 
who they are and where they are and where they can lead them and if they can lead them to Peacemaker, uh, you know, their number one um, person, their, their, their most wanted, the butterfly is most wanted right now. Um, we get the white dragon we get back to the forest chase and like the forest looking around white dragon and his people are skulking around um they are following the signal of the helmet um we see them actually walk right by john as he's hiding like behind a tree like near some like bushes and stuff and then we see <laughs> peacemaker all scratched up and he talks about a raccoon and that's what we see we see the um uh, we we have the conversation of john and peacemaker talking about i had you know what how what i just saw of you fighting a rat or you trying to put a helmet attach a helmet to a raccoon is exactly what i imagined that would have happened looked exactly what I would have imagined it to be which is so great um, it's so so funny um, it was it, it, it's a great little bit it's a great little like bonding moment between um, between John and Peacemaker because they <laughs> they've had their ups and downs and it's just a really funny like moment and stuff uh, i really love it it's really great we get um vigilante then passing out behind the wheel of the car because he's the like he was in front of a grenade he got all blown up like he's all messed up probably like bleeding out and stuff so he passes out um and pulls to the side of the road but doesn't like totally trash or total the car like it's just like oh and it just slowly like stops and like veers off to the side we get um Mern preparing um what seems to be his last goodbye because again Adebayo, Harcourt, and Mern are all at the apartment complex but 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 they're not all in the same apartment right now and so we see the um that we had they had all seen like the cops approaching uh Mern turns on like his walkie talkie starts um talking to Adebayo and Harcourt who ended up getting to get who are and who are in a hallway just like if this is like this is kind of how it is this is where they are this is where like Mern and stuff are and um yeah it's great it's a little it's a little corner shot like that we and we kind of cut in between like the Harcourt out of bio and like they're listening and their reactions to inside like Mern talking to them saying like go now get out of here I'm really proud of you guys uh, I'm really proud of you to have you on my team finish the job um Mern is then like you know the doors busted in he is swarmed um they, he is shot many times in the chest by song saying like they're like how did you know about like all like she's like how did you know about this you will not hurt me or, or you, there's that nothing you can do to like hurt me or make me say anything like that and he just like gives his whole i'm not speaking thing and then you know song shoots him many 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 times um in the chest uh they talk song and the rest of them talk about having to get teleportation equipment to the farm whoa Te teleportation like this is cool stuff now like i'm like again i have i can't say that i have been like oh my god this is the single greatest show in the world now i haven't I've, I've found Robert Patrick and the whole white dragon to be a real tough hang every time he's in and to kind of, and like every time he's on screen to just be like a downer like you're not supposed to like him but like I find it I, I don't know I just hate him um and uh either way I uh this is interesting teleportation equipment like this is because we can uh, we assume that it is still a part despite this being like 
very much so like a branch off of like the DC universe like very much so like um, just about Peacemaker it's really interesting that they're talking about something at, like teleportation I, I don't really necessarily remember technology like that being around granted like we had they talk about like the spaceships and stuff of like you know Superman coming here and all of that but um, I don't know I've always I had, like I don't know. I've always found teleportation like really interesting. I've I've always liked that idea of like beam me up, Scotty, from like Star Trek and everything like that. Um, it's actually probably a little bit different, but maybe not. Um, either way, I've always really liked that stuff. Um, so I find the concept of like <laughs> just the simple concept, maybe not so simple, with the concept of teleportation being brought into like DC's um, extended universe and stuff like that. Just a cool little thing. And like it it showing up in Peacemaker doesn't <laughs> it, 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 as iffy as I've been about the show, like showing having alien like butterflies show up and now teleportation like equipment like show up um in this show like along with like the little spaceships and stuff like um as weird and wacky as uh uh as weird and wacky as uh as peacemaker has been um it all fits like it doesn't feel like force it feels like all very natural like of course aliens and their little ships and like um, teleportation and all of this stuff, like, of course this fits into, like, the Peacemaker universe. Aren't you silly for not thinking? Or, are you silly for, like, not thinking that? Duh. And, like, the show kind of makes you, like, makes you realize that, that you're, like, like, if you're ever, like, I don't think, I, I don't think this belongs here. Like, the show kind of makes you be, be like, no, 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 it's meant to be here. It, it, it it's fine. It, it, it's meant to be exactly where it's supposed to be. Um, and it, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting how I, 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 everything about this show has been very interesting and been very fun. Um, well, not everything, not everything. Very interesting. Very interesting. Yes. Um, not everything about the show has been very fun, but I do love a lot of this show and have a tough, tough hangs with other portions of the show. Uh, again, we get, uh, the butterfly Mern now leaving um, the body of Mern and is like grabbed and crushed by Song and like Fitz gets in like Song's face like why'd you do that he's one of us you shouldn't have like killed him like that um, out of bio and Harcourt um, go into the apartment after all the cops finally leave the butterfly Mern is dying and like reaches his hand towards like Harcourt's like finger and um, it's really really sweet because she's really like heartbroken by it. We get uh, Judo Master and the fight between Adebayo Harcourt Judo Master is really great. It's really awesome. Um, and uh, they. Um, they beat him up. They beat him up, and we get a, like, they beat him up, and they leave, basically. <laughs> and then we get White Dragon. We get a cut to White Dragon and his crew. White Dragon and his crew finally find Peacemaker's helmet, and, Peace, and they find the raccoon attached to Peacemaker's helmet. All of this is extremely, like, it's extremely funny because they're, I'm, Robert Patrick is so mad and I'm just like, ha 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 ha, you're mad. <laughs> um, like, I'm just laughing at it. I love that little, like, goose chase, like, hunt that they just, like, Peacemaker and John just sent, um, uh, just sent the White Dragon and all of his, like, uh, people, like, on throughout the forest and everything like that. Um... I also love the uh, uh, eagly kind of like after we we get a cut from the white dragon and his people we go to peacemaker and John and eagly we get uh, 
<laughs> we get um, eagerly attacking John to get into the car because uh, John and Peacemaker and Eagly have made it out of the little bit of forest here, found Vigilante, Vigilante moved over, and we also get uh, Vigilante leaning over like ready to like again repass out and turning on the music and he's like never the wrong time to rock and he's just like now's the wrong time now it's the wrong time as he's trying to throw it in reverse and get get them out of there um vigilante like pseudo like wakes up a little bit more and it's like how did they uh how did they like find you like how did they find us like he asked the same question john did they get the answer of like oh there's tracking in the helmets and vigilante's like oh and peacemaker's like oh don't tell me the bag that he picked up was the remaining helmets of peacemakers so they toss those to the side now vigilante goes and takes uh, uh, a pee right as the white dragon and uh his crew arrive uh we see uh we see john slink away into the uh the forest as peacemaker and his dad the white dragon start to fight and ah it's such a great fight we get um We get the White Dragon giving his, like, sermon, basically, here, saying, like, I've been tested like Abraham. I knew, uh, ah, God. I knew that, uh, this speech was going to be, like, awful, and it was, and it was just the White Dragon, like, just going off saying, like, horrible things. And it's like, I get it. The White Dragon is a terrible person. He's a terrible dad. There is no question about that. He is an awful human being um i always just had a problem with peacemakers like um i have no problem with how many men women and children i'm willing to kill probably a lot of the children portion of that um the men and women is also pretty awful but the, the children children's pretty bad um to keep like peace or whatever it was um that were introduced to him in in the suicide squad and stuff so like um i'm glad that like he's kind of like clearly had trouble with that especially with like goff's family and everything like that was like his turn despite them being like butterflies and stuff he still like hesitated at the shot and then we also then in that episode we also got the like really wackiness of vigilante just like whistling during it the whole time picking them off but um besides this we get um the ramblings of white dragon and like how like peacemaker's just this awful person he call um we get uh, his dad saying that like you know peacemaker sleeps with like taint whatever tainted people both men and women and stuff which is like hey cool like peacemaker's bisexual that's great awesome um I don't know. Cool. Uh, I just hated that his. I don't know. I just hated that it came from his dad. But it's also, it could. It also wasn't like a super stretch. Um, I mean, he had a three way with the, with Amber and Vigilante. Like, <laughs> so, um, I don't know. Whatever. Um, but I mean, hey, I guess, I guess I mean that's kind of a big thing. He's uh he's a white superhero who's bisexual that's probably something like big out there um or just a bisexual superhero that's probably a big thing too so yeah that's cool um i've got nothing wrong i've got nothing wrong with that i just hate that it was like that it's that it's thrown in his face by his dad is like something you should be shameful for and like not proud of and like it's it's part of what god is like testing me to like make me this white dragon person and it's just like ugh, ugh, you're awful so that's more so why 
um, that probably bothers me more so than anything. Otherwise, like, great, like, show more representation in that, like, that's awesome, get it, get, get it out there. Uh, uh, it can only make for better storytelling, a wider, wider net of stories now being able to be told, and you can only get better stories from that wider net, um, hopefully. Um, Either way, Vigilante then um, kind of comes in into this fight, breaks, uh, like, actually breaks the White Dragon's, like, armor because it starts to, like, spark a little bit. Um, John moves the White Dragon and shoots the White Dragon in the head with, like, a little, like, pistol. Bam! And he admits, like, we get... Peacemaker admitting and, like, beating his dad up, like, that he's a piece of shit and stuff, and, ah, oh, man, I get it, I get it, it was so good, it was so awesome, Peacemaker, um, yeah, it's, it's great, it's great, Peacemaker finally kills his dad, kills the white dragon, and it's just awesome, it's just so good, we get, um, Harcourt and Adebayo again together um Adebayo helps clean up um helps like clean up like Harcourt and her cuts after like fighting Judo Master and stuff um we find out here that uh Harcourt or, fr or Harcourt finds out that Adebayo used to run a dog shelter and that's how she um that's how she got here, um, she used to run, yeah, she used to run the dog shelter, um, they had the conversation of, like, being inside a group of people that they don't really trust and can't trust, um, um, we also get the, um, Harcourt and, uh, Adebayo, like, I could tell, like, Harcourt could tell, could tell that Adebayo was help, hiding something, and Adebayo could tell that Harcourt could tell that Adebayo was hiding something, and that's a really fun conversation that they have. Um, they, uh, we get Harcourt saying that, you know, like, you, or you, you are good. Like you, you are good at this job. You you're able to do more than you give yourself credit for. So you should be happy at least about that. Like we need you. We need everyone if we're gonna go kill this cow. And then uh, they get the call from John. They're at the uh, pause. <laughs> we get a cut to outside of pause vet. Peacemaker is being all kind of like weird. Eagly is getting stitched up. Vigilante is all like, yeah, we have to kill everybody here. Um, and John's like, um, no, we don't. Harcourt's like, no, we don't. They saw our face. You know, Vigilante's like, they saw our face. No. Um, can't so we, we can just tie him up and that we can and they will let us like like we can tie him up we can let them go it'll be it'll be fine vigilante right right we can tie you up yeah wear some duct tape vigilante's like we can't use duct tape and john's like so you'll kill them and you have compassion for tying them up but not for killing them vigilante's like yes <laughs> like looks around and is like yes <laughs> yes that is that is true john that is true uh that is <laughs> it's so awesome we get um we get another cut then to peacemaker in with eagly he's crying over eagly he's upset because eagly got like you know shot clipped um so they're getting stitched up obviously at the vet there out of bio sees Eagly kind of wakes up and Eagly gives Peacemaker another hug. Adebayo sees it. We get the flashback to when they first met in the uh, second episode at uh, uh, Fennel Fields, that restaurant. And uh, Peacemaker talks about Eagly hugging him then 
like you know seeing him for the first time after four years of being in jail and everything um it is absolutely hilarious it is awesome i love every single second of it it is uh it's just so good it's just so funny that we see this flashback because now like out sees it like because she was like there's no way an eagle will hug somebody that's a lie you are lying that, that that did not happen that is not real like there's no way that happened and now she finally saw it for her own self for her with her own two eyes like it's it's great we get um after that we get out calling Kia saying like she saw a sign um she needs to stay with them and she needs to basically help and uh and we need you know somebody to lead us you know John's like I'm not gonna lead us and Harcourt leads Harcourt takes control she comes up with a plan we get um the inner cut of the police at the cow we see the um police like setting up like all the butterfly controlled police setting up um the farm and they arrive at like this big barn thing um we see them enter milking the beast and like everything in the cavern um we see uh how uh we get the information that they can't survive more than you know uh without the cow they won't be able to survive more than a few weeks if anything like happens to it we learned that from the butterflies that that's all the supply that they have now that you know clearly peacemaker and so much more know about like stuff going on here um they want to move the cow via teleportation so that's really cool uh the best part though is that we also get um like everything i said of like the police the milking of the beast the um the can't survive like the not all of that is cut between like harcourt saying like giving out her plan at the vet place and then cut with the police at the um at the farm doing this stuff um like to the uh to the uh beast and everything like that like getting getting there and everything um but the best part of this is when we get a cut back to the vet staff and they're all a part of going in guns a blazing fighting <laughs> fighting the good fight and everything like that and they're all like no 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 you guys are staying here you're all gonna die you're not you're not like part of the team you can't do this you can't be a part of that like but we are gonna have to take your vehicle and we get a cut outside of them walking into like a big um pause like van rv type thing very similar to what they had just like personally had themselves before the white dragon destroyed it earlier in this episode um we get the vet staff talking about how like um you know despite everything that just happened surprisingly very nice and very kind people and everyone's like yeah yeah you know kind of crazy kind of wild uh we see the butterflies again beneath the barn we get the whole first look now at the beast at the larvae it looks kind of like a caterpillar like larvae thing but it's clearly being milked and stuff like that um the, this animal is huge um this whole thing has been like wild uh it was so crazy to um, to see all of this uh, this whole episode was great we finally saw like what the cow and like what all of that like is and what it looked like like I mean what I don't think we even saw um, I don't think we saw our first butterfly really until like episode 3 or something um, all of that was great though this was a really cool episode this was a really fun episode this really kind of upped the um, up the action and stuff to it um, it's been a really good time. 
Uh, I have really, I really enjoyed this episode. I have been enjoying this show from episode. It's grown on me per episode. Um, I still don't. I, I'm happy that Peacemaker got a show. I still think that he didn't necessarily deserve it, but I've been enjoying his ride a little bit more than I've probably. Sh- then I've probably given credit because I'm still here, I'm still talking about it. I'm still watching it every time they drop a new episode. So um, I try not to go longer than how long the episode was. So I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, again, my name's Jimmy. Thank you for joining me here on the Triple C Collective on this Superhero Saturday for Peacemaker, Episode 7 Stop Dragging My Heart Around. See ya. Have a great day. <laughs>